So I'm Kim Bergman. I'm a licensed psychologist and also a lesbian mom. And why that's important is because what I'm going to talk about is the journey to parenthood for you begins with your relationship with the people that you're doing this with. And for heterosexual couples, often that's just each other. But for gay couples, um, it truly does take a village. And it, um, surrogacy is a collaboration between a bunch of willing and fully informed consenting adults, all for the purpose of somebody becoming a parent. And while you can do it um, with, you can end up with a baby even if the journey's rocky, um, it's, m it's obviously much better if the journey itself is also a treasured experience. And one of the most important reasons for that is that the story of your child's conception and birth and, um, and beginnings are going to be really important to your child. And sometimes you are not thinking about that at the beginning when you're making some of your parent choices and decisions in, in how to become a parent. So the relationship with the surrogate is, is really, really important as part of the journey because your child is going to want to know about that part of the journey. So, um, you know, a word of advice is make the choices about the way that you do this process, things you're proud of, things you kind of want to shout from the mountaintop. Um, usually you'll meet your surrogate through on paper first and then in, in person through a match meeting. And, and that is the place where you can talk about all the different aspects of the journey. And the most important thing there is setting expectations so that everybody's on the same page. Um, do you want to have a lot of contact? Do you want to talk every day? Do you want to talk once a week? What does she want? And making sure that everybody's on the same page about what that journey is going to look like. Once you agree to work with your doctor or your agency or your surrogate, the most important ingredient in the relationship is trust. And surrogacy, by the way, is not for the faint of heart. It is a roller coaster. It's, you know, buckle your seatbelt and, and hold on, because there are a lot of ups and downs, which is why, as my colleagues have mentioned, you, you really want to choose your team of experts wisely, because they're going to be your partners in this. But, um, but for your relationship with the surrogate, um, if you don't trust her, then the journey is really going to be challenging. So. You don't have to trust the first surrogate you meet or the first agency or the first expert. But once you make those choices, trusting, not blindly, but trusting is a super important essential ingredient. The, the second thing that's really important is communication. Now, there will be some people, some of you, who want to have a pretty transactional relationship with your surrogate. And that's a very personal choice as long as your surrogate's on the same page and you've established that at the beginning. But for most people, you're going to want to have a relationship with your surrogate, and communication is, is key. Um, being in communication as well as how you communicate, um, respect, um, you know, mutual respect, and um, understanding that the surrogate is, is doing something that really does take sacrifice on her part. Surrogates are motivated, by the way by um, a healthy mix of narcissism and altruism, a healthy mix. So, you know, I can do this, it's a calling. Um, as, as my colleague mentioned, you know, in, at Growing Generations, we only accept about 1% of the women who apply to our program to be surrogates. And that's because um, we know what it, what it takes. M many times people think all you have to be is a woman, and that is, is really, really not true. It's a very, very specialized person who can, you know, give this way, um, carry a baby for someone, n know that um, they're, they're, they don't have full control, kn know that they're part of a collaboration. And the screening process is key to having that journey go well. All of the stories you hear about on the news, all the horror stories, all the bad things, all my colleagues, I'm sure, will shake their heads at this. In every single one of those cases, that what went wrong could have been 100% prevented if the right steps were in place, if the right screening was in place, if the right professionals were in place. So it's really, really important that, that that's all happening at the beginning. Um, OK, so having your relationship with the surrogate be established early on 
And as well as obvious things, and they're, they've been covered by my colleagues, but they're covered at the match meeting. You know, what you're going to do in the result of multiples, it, it, do you want an amnio, what if there's a C-section, all that stuff is going to be talked about at the beginning, agreed upon, and codified in the contract. Um, the, the, the last thing I want to talk about, I'm trying to keep time, but there we go, it turned off. Um, you're fine. <laughs> thanks. The last thing that I want to talk about is, um, you know, telling your story and, and having all of those pieces be, um, be things that, again, that you want to shout from the mountaintop. Nothing like, there's nothing in the world like becoming a parent or having a newborn baby that will, will test your skills of, uh, you know, just about everything. And one of the things that I find, and I've been working in the field of gay and lesbian parenting um, for my entire career, which I'm about to date myself as 30 years, um, but, um, and, and I echo Guy in saying it's, it's, it's amazing to be where we are now with all these professionals because Guy and I have both been doing this for, as, as well as other people for, you know, for the better part of 30 years. And we used to be really the lone voices in LGBT parenting. Um, but what, what, what's important is, um, you know, for you as a couple, um, looking at your family, Understanding the role of the people that you're that are helping you, the surrogate, the donor, yourselves, um, all the professionals, and really creating a, a a tableau that you're going to be proud to talk about and share with your children because they will want to know, and and they have a right to know. Um, so, um, you know, figuring out between the two of you, uh, whose sperm are you going to use? Whose name are you going to use? What are you going to be called? All of these are things that um, can go into the emotional fabric of, of, parent, of parenting and, and bringing children into the world through third party assisted reproduction. By the way, you know, we're, we're, we're pioneers, but we're not really out there on the edges anymore. Uh, the last census, um, only 25% of families in America, and that, that was the 2000 census, because that's the last data we have fully, um, the 2010 census isn't really available yet. But only 25% of American families are, consist of a husband, wife who are married and have their own fully biological children. So we're really not on the fringes, it's just um, the sort of media and kind of the social climate hasn't quite caught up, although I think it's certainly moving in that direction. Um, so I think you know it's really important to think about, it's, it's easy to think now about making the choices that are gonna kind of get us there the quickest, but um, as, a, as the mother of two teenagers who were conceived through assisted reproduction, I could tell you that they wanna know their story, they wanna know it from the very, very beginning. All children wanna know where they came from, and they wanna know, um, and you know, they're not asking because there's something wrong, it's just a normal curiosity. Um, my words of wisdom, I know most of you aren't parents yet, so just sort of file this for later on. Um, because one of the number one calls I get from people after they've had their kids is when they're three or four or five years old and they kind of forgot to tell their kids and their kids now want to know. So my word of caution or my word of advice on that is, um, is tell your kids from the very, very beginning the age appropriate truth just like you do about everything else that they want to know about. And so in looking forward to that, Construct your child's story of conception in a way that you can be proud, knowing who the players are, knowing who the, how you put the pieces together, um, knowing what everybody's motivation was for being a part of it, because those are going to be, the, again, the fabric of your child's story. Um, so I don't have a table in the courtyard, but I will be here for a while, so please feel free to ask me more questions as they come up. Kim, is there... Um any uh, uh, marker that parents can recognize in themselves psychologically that they are ready to be parents? Uh, no, there is not. <laughs> uh, you know, mo most people, um, well, what's, what's funny is I, I, I do a lot of research in this field of, of LGBT parenting and, and parenting, um, inten intentional parenting. And, I, and, and I've got a theory that um, you know, a lot of the research, most of the research shows that LGBT parents or parents who adopt or parents who use IVF 
um, are really great parents. And in some studies, they are even better parents. I'm not attempting to prove that or say that's true, but this is what scientific research shows. Um, much of which was quoted, by the way, in the recent Supreme Court cases, so that was pretty cool. But um, so my theory about why that is is because m for most people, when they're when they're when they get pregnant right away and they are kind of handed their baby, the the lessons of parenthood that we all need to learn kind of start then. So you get your baby, and now you're going to learn about you know patience and the fact that you have very little control over anything and you know the fact that you need to collaborate and choose a lot of people to help you get through this well as as parents who have to do this process with a lot of extra people money help time I believe that we we go through a lot of those necessary lessons before the child is there as a guinea pig and so um, you know, and, and this is my own working theory, it's a little funny, but I think it's going to prove out, and I actually have a, a couple of studies on resi parent, parent resilience, and, and what I think is that we, we sort of come to the table when we, when we get the baby, we've already been in the process for, you know, at least, in the case of surrogacy, at least, uh, I mean, this is a rush job, a year, more likely two years of having to deal with all of the, the lessons that parents have to go through. So, so I know it's a little long answer, but no, I don't think, I think there's no marker at all. I think nobody's actually ready to be a parent. For those of you who are parents, you know the first probably, you know, three months of parenthood pretty much turn your world upside down, and there is no human way to prepare for that. And maybe the deliberateness of the act and uh, the anxiousness itself is a sign that you're ready to be a parent. Probably. Yeah. yeah.